Hey guys, how's it going? Well, today I'm going to uh, show you guys how to construct a reverse foot rig. And there's many ways to set up a reverse foot, um, just like with any controls of any rig, you know. You, uh, you kind of need to experiment with, um, you know, all the possibilities and see what works best for you, best for your game engine if you're going into a game, or best for your uh, animator. Um, if you're going to pass it to him or, you know, if you're going to do all the rigging and animation yourself, just kind of your own personal style, see what you like. Um, now, uh, there's, like I said, there's, there's almost infinite possibilities of the way to rig. Um, and with a rever reverse foot, there's three main ways of doing it that I've seen. One is where you do one base handle around here and then you have all of the rotation for the toe and the ball in the channel box. So like rotate X, Y, Z everything like that um, is kind of just like custom attributes over there. Uh, the, the other way that I've seen, um, the one that is taught here at RPI, is where you group IK handles and you kind of still do the, um, the channel box thing, but you don't have a separate reverse foot joint, um, a, a separate re reverse foot joint chain. You just group the IKs. And that's, that's uh, I, I mean, it, it's, it's a perfectly good style to use. It might not work for certain game engines that you're doing. Um, the last style, the one that I'm gonna teach you today, is the one that I use on all of my rigs. And it's, um, I, I prefer it uh, over the other ones, simply because it allows you to kind of just grab what you wanna move and move it um, in the viewport, you know. It, it's it, meaning that you don't have to kind of say like, oh, maybe I want the, you know, the ball of the foot to be kind of like slightly tilted and up, so I have to figure out whether I need to rotate X, Y, or Z. Now, it's, it, it's kind of like you just grab a handle and you move it um, yourself. So, with that said, uh, let's um, go ahead and get started. All right, so I've got my basic leg here, Boxman's off, awesome le leg, if I can pronounce it right. Um, I have my geometry group. And I just named geometry basic uh, names. And I also assigned that group to a layer. Um, so I just created the layer with that button with the group selected and should still be assigned. Yep. All right. Um, now we're going to be creating layers for all of our components. The, the other uh, benefit for using this style of rigging is that everything has its own group in the outliner and has its own layer, meaning uh, mesh is all in one group, IKs, uh, joints, control curves, they all have their own groups, so it's really easy to find stuff in your outliner um, and in your layer, or uh, layer palette. With that said, it's very important to stay organized and to drop stuff in their respective groups and layers as soon as you create them. So, let's go ahead and make our joint chain. All right, so we've got uh, we Now this will be the true joint chain. Um, when I say true, I mean we're going to have the one that actually binds the, the mesh is bound to and then the reverse foot. So we want to have none orientation for our lower body and I'm just going to go ahead and place these joints something like that. Alright. Oops. Going to lower this so it's perfectly horizontal with that joint. And I'm going to go ahead and name the joints. We have left, leg, upper. Going to go down. We have left, leg, lower. Down again, we have left ankle. Left ball. And finally, left toe. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and group the joint chain and make joints G, uh, GRP. And also keep that selected. I'm going to go ahead and add it to a layer down here. Oops. Somehow I got into render layers. One second. All right. So make sure you're on display layers right here. So I'm going to have that joints group selected. And let's go ahead and rename that joints underscore layer. All right. So um, now what we need to do is we want to bind the skin. And the reason why uh, I'm binding right now 
is because there's something later on that I'll need to show you guys that you can only see through the mesh. You can't actually see it when you're testing the rig. Like you can't see it um, just based on the movement, rotation of the joints. You have to see it based on the mesh. Um, and this was from an earlier project that I already had bound. So uh, I just need to delete those connections real quick. But all you guys will need to do is just select a joint, select the mesh, and we're just gonna go to skin, bind skin with the option box. And make sure your settings are selected joints, closest in hier hierarchy, dual quaternion, interactive, um, and all the other stuff can be the default. Um, the reason why we're doing selected joints is because we only want one joint to control each object here. Um, and that's because we have different objects. If we had one, uh, if our character was all one object, we'd have to do weight painting and that would be a hassle. So um, I figure we can keep it stupid, simple for, uh, simple, stupid, stupid, simple for this example. All right. So um, next we want to create the IK handle and we want to have a reverse, or sorry, rotate plane IK for the knee. So from upper leg to ankle, we're going to test it once just to make sure that works. Be sure when you test that you grab it in the center with its yellow box. Um, you know, people test in one axis all the time and it, it drives me crazy because you can only test so much and it takes three times as long. Just, you know, grab it in the center, shake it around. If it looks like it's going good, undo back and don't ever touch it again. You, you don't want to, um, you, you really don't want to move your IKs around too much because undo doesn't always work and you kind of can't get back to where you started sometimes um, because you can't freeze transformations on an IK. All right, so for the other joints, we're going to do a single chain IK SC from the ankle to the ball. And again, I, I just hit Y to reenact the last tool, the IK tool. Um, we're going to do from the ball to the toe. All right, so we have, we're going to name this left ball IK. And this will be left toe IK. And again, group these guys, IK GRP. And we're going to add that to a layer down here. All right. So next thing that we want to do is we want to change our joint radius size. Um, for our joints. Now, you don't want to scale down your joints. You, you almost never want to scale your joints. Um, but we want to change the display size of this because we're going to have joints overlapping each other in this. So I'm going to go over here to radius and I've got all my joints selected. Just going to type one. It's going to make them pretty big, but um, that's fine because our reverse joint chain, which will overlap this joint chain, is going to be uh, um, the joint radius size is going to be 0.5. So we can, uh, so we, we can easily select joints in both chains. All right, so I'm going to go back to our joint tool, and I'm going to create joints kind of in in rough locations underneath our true joint chain, because it doesn't it doesn't really matter where we create them at first, because we're going to snap all of them to their respective joints. So let's go ahead and name the joints. This is going to be left RF for reverse foot, ankle. Oh wait, sorry, I think. Okay, sorry, so that's actually the base. Um, all right, base, there we go. Uh, the next one is going to be left RF toe. Then we have left RF ball. And we have left RF uh, ankle. All right, so now um, I'm going to go ahead and drop this again into the joints group. And so now I'm going to put the joints in the right location. Um, I'm going to hold V on my keyboard and middle mouse wiggle on my ankle joint um, with, the, with the base joint selected. Uh, then I'm going to hold X and let's see, actually no, sorry, I'm going to hold V and horizontally snap it to the, um, the horizontal level of the ball and toe joints. 
then I'm going to just grab the rest of these joints and snap them to the their respectable true joint chains. So um, the toe to the toe, the ball to ball, and finally ankle to ankle. All right, and I'm just gonna pop out into uh, perspective view, make sure everything is lined up correctly. And finally, I'm gonna select all of the joints in my reverse foot joint reverse foot joint chain and change their radius to 0.5 just so it's a little bit easier to select them. All right. So now um, I am going to create my control curves. And so remember how I said with the other uh, rigging setups, you just have one kind of big um, uh, one, one kind of big controller around the base of the foot. Uh, well, in this one, you actually have three, but um, if you, we're going to keep them all circles, relatively simple shapes. Uh, I'm going to snap this one to the grid, so that's always on the bottom. It actually doesn't matter where this is, um, like the display location of it, because we just need to make sure that our pivot point for this one is at the angle. angle. So to do that, I'm going to hold D, hold D to change my pivot point and hold V which will snap to vertex at the same time. Notice it's snapping up there. Um, and I'm a middle mouse wiggle on the ankle right there. So now when I rotate it, it rotates from the ankle um, as it would in a, as any ankle would in um, any rig or, uh, you know, just in, in real life. All right, so I'm gonna grab this circle that um, I duplicated before. If you didn't duplicate it, just make another circle. Um, I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees I'm gonna then snap it to the grid, hold X, and I'm going to grab these vertices right here, and I'm gonna tr I'm gonna snap them so that it's I've got a horizontal line here. All right. Now they they held their shape, their ver their vertice kind of like um, formation, but I want to get a flat line, so I'm gonna hold W. Oops, with them selected. I try and hold W. Worked a second ago. Oh, okay. All right. So I'm going to select the vertices, hold W, left click, and turn snapping off. And now when I do that, notice everything snaps to the same horizontal line. So uh, I'm just going to throw that back on because I might want it later. All right. So after we've got that, we're going to snap that to one to the ball joint and one to the toe. But we want to make sure that, um, here, I'll go ahead and center, uh, actually, yeah, I, w I want it to basically be on the grid like that. So I'm kind of snapping it to the to the ball joint and then X holding X and snapping it down. But um, I'm going to actually change the pivot point to the joint that it's around, if that makes sense. Um, so right now the pivot points on the on the at, on the grid. I'm going to hold D and V and just change the pivot point to the the joint that they need to be around. All right. So then I'm going to uh, go ahead and name the control curves. I might make these a little bit smaller and make sure I can grab them easily. All right, I'm gonna make this guy a tiny bit bigger. Oops. All right. Uh, I'm gonna change my point to the grid Why I make it bigger because I, I want this curve to stay planar to the grid. If I had scaled it from the angle, it would have pulled down below the grid. All right. So then I'm just going to uh, name um, name these curves. So we have left foot control. We have left toe control. And finally, we have left ball control. You guys can name these however you want. Um, these are just the names that I personally use. All right, so we're going to group those. Control curves group. And I'm going to make a layer. And I'm running out of time. So I will uh, continue this in uh, part two of um, the reverse foot tutorial. See you guys there.